Good morning all, welcome. Wyoming 2019 second season whitetail hunt. My mom and my daughter are coming back in a couple of days. And so I got two days to kind of get set up. I've got three tags. I've got a buck tag and two whitetail doe tags. Our numbers are way up, so we've got to get those does slimmed down. I, uh, I came in this morning, I peeked over this ridge and there's a real nice buck chasing a doe. It's not where my mom and daughter are gonna hunt, so I'm gonna try and harvest this deer. This is a, this is a really nice deer. I'm just gonna set up the camera. If he steps out of the frame, doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and hunt him. I could just, I gotta walk away from it. So I'm gonna get to where um, I can see his general area and then slip in there. So hang in there. Okay, all I heard was a thwack and I could see a deer disappear in the grass and the two does ran out, so I'm thinking I smoked this buck. I don't know if it's in the frame or not, but I think you could see him walking. He may have walked out, but oh man, I gotta cross the river. Body on this deer. Bitchin' split brows. Holy cow. These deer get so, they get so big in this country. Body wise, it's just gigantic white tail. Get some photos and then, then I'll get him all cleaned up. Hey y'all, let's talk trophy shots for just a second. Uh, there's a big debate with the non-hunting community that it's boastful and disrespectful and why would anybody uh, take a, a grip and grin with something that they killed. It's just ignorance. From the hunter standpoint, when I take a photograph with this animal, it's done completely out of respect. This sport of hunting for food and for representative trophy is part of the balance. Man has been here forever. God give us dominion over these animals to utilize and protect, meaning there's very strict checks and balances. I apply six months in advance for this particular area. I have a little window in time. I'm allowed one of these bucks. I have to get it done within that time frame. There isn't an abundance of this, so they regulate it. And I work really hard and spend a lot of money to get to these points. So when I overcome these obstacles, like traveling 25 or 30 hours in snowstorms, and waking up early and fighting the cold and trudging through miserable conditions to get an opportunity to harvest this for meat for my family, to share with uh, a platform that appreciates it. That trophy shot is paramount. You absolutely have to take it. In the same breath, you owe it the respect to take it professionally. Now you don't have to be a professional photographer but your camera is, or your cell phone is. So, what I'm getting at here is for the first time in a long time, I'm not in any hurry. It's just me today, I've got the entire day, and so I'm gonna spend a little time taking a quality trophy shot. Now, because of the situation, I've backed this buck up against the log, and I can get his head in a semi-relaxed position. In an ideal situation, I would want his eyes on the skyline. Doesn't always work, but you wanna get his horns with daylight behind them. It just looks better. Remove any of the blood. So I've taken out his tongue. My buddy Jim Breckbean and the whole High West Outfitter team in West Texas, they will super glue that mouth shut so it doesn't hang open and look disrespectful. You want to get that head as level as you can. Sometimes you can't tell. Like I'm by myself and I would guess that's level, but you could probably tell me a different story. 
you don't want to have any of your shoulder, your arm, or anything interrupting that silhouette of the horns. See how this deer is semi-relaxed? And then I'm shooting with a DSLR. And what happens, just because I'm not super proficient with that camera, is if the focal point is here, and I am back here, then I am out of focus and the deer is in focus. Or if I focus on me, he's out of focus. I also like to be on the same plane from a focal standpoint, plus it gives you a boundary. You have a rough idea how big I am, right? I'm like seven foot six, 180 pounds, nothing but muscle. It's not true. But you can see perspective. So this is a great buck, not a giant buck, but he's beautiful and he's everything I could ever ask for on this hunt. I just can't tell you the amount of appreciation I have for this deer, so I'm going to spend some time and take some photos. That shadowing that's on that deer is the grass that's behind me as the sun's coming up. Time is my friend. If I just wait, just wait 10, 15 minutes, it's all going to go away. So for what it's worth, take that time, get your trophy shots, do it right. You only get this one little chance to do it. If I was hustling and breaking down this deer right now and trying to run back to the truck and go harvest these does, then I would miss this whole experience, this whole time trying to take this thing because this picture is going to outlast my body, my mind, my grandkids' mind. I'm, I'm representing a place in time, what we did as hunters right now in 2019. Share that stuff. Don't hold it back. Do it legally. Do it ethically and be proud of what you do. Now, something that happens way too often uh, to a lot of the taxidermists and skull guys is they, they get a deer that shows up that's just got 14 inches of neck meat on it. That's uh, horribly illegal. And um, just a shout out to a few of the guys that said, hey, can you say something about it? My buddy Jason Nestor, uh, Skull Brothers out of Flagstaff, Arizona, the Bogus Boys, you guys need skull work done up in that country. They are fantastic. I'm gonna put this together real quick for them. Uh, a closer view of what I did last week, just so you can see how to take a head off at the apex joint. If you're cleaning deer on the ground, remove the head and the feet first, save you a ton of work. Behind the ears, you can feel a bump on the back of the head. You can use the ears as a reference too, but there's an atlas joint there. You're just gonna wanna cut through that hide and down through the back of the head, okay? You'll see it right there. We hit it, right? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over. Okay, we've cut the back. So we're gonna use this, this bottom jaw. The hide's been removed. no neck meat all this neck meat here is now available when you skin up you're not going to be fighting the head you can just pull it off there and grab all your neck meat There's the rest of it for your critters, badgers, magpies, coyotes, fox, and bobcat. Have at it. Both hindquarters, both front shoulders, both neck loins, back loins, neck roast. That's what you're missing if you're cutting that head too short. Tender loins, liver, heart, grind and rib meat, and the crown jewel 31 minutes you can do it it feels good to be proficient about what you do now all you gotta do is pick a little hair let it cool down and enjoy it with your family y'all i have separated this into a big bag of four quarters 
and everything else in a small game bag. Now this deer weighed in around 250 pounds and so I know that a 3000 pack is not designed for it. I don't have to go very far, maybe three or 400 yards. So I just strap it to the outside of the pack and off we go. It'll help you to set your backpack on something so you're already standing up when you got a bunch of weight on you. Clip everything in, get it tight, make sure you get that belt strap tight so your hips are holding a lot of the weight. <coughs> Ease up. Try not to take any of those giant bounding steps. Just one foot in front of the other, y'all. Make sure you have, in the state of Wyoming, make sure you have your carcass coupon. The long part you notch, make sure your carcass coupons in with the meat, not with the head. Uh, head needs to be with meat for proof of sex. And if I didn't have the head and I was traveling, I would need to have some sort of male identification on that meat, attached, not cut off and put in the back, attached. You know, for me, one of the big benefits to having a piece of property that you either lease or or have rights to or something like that is you become partially land manager of those animals. You're hunting the right age class. You're helping dictate how many numbers can be taken without damaging what's going on. This ranch here is completely opposite, 30 days different. In October, we see maybe six, seven bucks, mule deer bucks. Yesterday I drove in, I saw over 30 mule deer bucks. It just changes. Managing a property year after year after year, you're able to go back and you see the patterns of where they want to be, what they want to do. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is, how did you get your kids involved in hunting? Um, you know, I don't know if my daughter or my son wants to hunt. <clears throat> There's no secret sauce to any of this. They're their own people. You will absolutely change the way they think about it if you do it correctly. For example, my daughter, she's 16. This is gonna be her first real hunt. She's been around it her whole life. She eats game meat constantly. It's her number one source of protein. She loves what I do, but there's a delicate balance of how she, it's gonna be perceived by her friends at school and what she would like to do with her father. And this is it, where, where is she gonna be? So what I'm doing now because I know the deer love this little area and they're new to shooting, new to setting up, they don't want to mess up, then I'm going to really make this as comfortable as I can. So I have chairs, I've got a blind, I've got multiple heaters, I've got a chainsaw where I'm going to set up rest. I got this big sliding tote that I just got so I can drag all this stuff up to where I'm going. Um, I guess to summarize, the key is know where you're taking your kids try and get them in a place where they have an opportunity or at least a good experience get it as comfortable as you can for them and encourage them and let them know that killing the animal is not the most important part the fact that we're all here together working to do this if we get one wonderful if we don't wonderful just remember kids are delicate and they're gonna watch what you do everything you're doing they're watching so lead by example let's go drag this thing over <laughs> okay i got the girls blind all set up i'm going to show you just a little bit of what i've done it's a little more work than i thought it was going to be but it's pretty sweet check this out so here's the blind from the outside so i moved these big cottonwood uh lay down logs and i tied everything off nice and tight of course right i got it as flat and level as i could this is their vantage point. And then here's what it looks like inside. The chairs are upside down so the frost doesn't hit them. Heater there, heater behind me. There's the seat and then I put in the shoot and rest. So this big log is just ideal. I use these trigger sticks as a backup. But ultimately, 
they can lay on this log nice and steady and it covers the whole stint of the blind. The reason we're shooting off the bucket is it's the right height to lean over on this log. Super comfy. What if I did this whole video with no voiceover? Wouldn't that be special? I started doing the voiceover because wind wrecked most of my film back in the day. So I would drop the sound out and I would say, hey, this is what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And it became a thing. Uh, I never tried to make that a thing, it just happened. So, but I've always wanted to be able to tell a story completely with the camera and uh, it's tough. It's tough when you're hunting and guiding and helping. And So, the girls are all set up. It's like noon. I've got that deer butchered, getting cold. Everything's done. Tags, like it's all done. Ah, my heart is whole, I feel good. So. I'm gonna do my favorite thing in the whole world. Can you say it with me? I'm gonna go for a slow walk through the cottonwoods and I'm gonna see if I can't uh, get one of the two does taken care of right now. And honestly, this is my, when I close my eyes and dream, this is where I walk. I just love it. I don't know if it's just the, the quiet, the treasure hunt inside, what's inside. I have no idea, but I love it. So walk with me. I'm not going to get too excited about pulling that trigger, but I am going to get you some footage. I got the gun strapped in the pack because I really want to focus on that camera piece, the part I'm always making excuses about. Um, I got the truck parked in the shade, I got the back open, all that meat's laid out. It's cooling down, it's already cold to the touch. It was like 8 degrees this morning, uh, it's like mid-30s right now, but that shade's a big deal. So. If you park it in the sun, you're going to get natural solar gain. You don't want that. Um, let's just go for a walk. Let's uh, let's hope for a shed. Ah, I do have a turkey tag as well. Watch out, gobble gobble. That's a full-blown, legit 180-inch free-range Wyoming whitetail. They exist. I wish I'd have brought that long lens. This is only like a 135. Makes you feel like you screwed up this morning by harvesting that buck I did, which I didn't screw up. That's the buck I wanted. I shot him. I gotta see if I can get my mom or Lens in here. Get set up on that deer. That deer is unbelievable. He's the deer we want to be hunting in here. I found that one shed, so I was hitting it against my gun barrel. Big buck left. Both little deer came in.
Okay, real quick update. I, uh, I went for a big walk this morning trying to find a doe and staying away from that area where that great big buck is. I'm hoping I can get my mom on that deer. Um, so I pulled off to a new area, I parked the truck, I went maybe 50 yards and I could see a head stick up. Super great buck. You're going to see the footage. I thought, holy cow, why is he by himself? Anyway, because it's windy, everything's laid down. This doe stood up and you got to see that. Um, here she is, and uh, let's get some pictures and get her cleaned up.
My mom and daughter came in around 8 o'clock at night, so they're seeing this whole world in the dark. And so by design, we didn't wake up before sunrise and get out to the blind and walk them through freezing temperatures and unfamiliar territory. Again, you want this to be a really good experience. So we let the sun come up and we eased our way in there and just spent our first morning getting familiar with our surroundings. We made a good lunch, saw some critters, and our first day was already over. And if it be your will to have a great big giant buck or two, come within 40 yards while we eat lunch, okay. <laughs> no sense in doing it oh, twice. Oh, you look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to go hunting with daddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Morning of day two with the girls, we woke up to a light dusting of snow and cold temps. As soon as we got in the blind and got settled, I said, Lens, we got a buck coming. She was on deck because we were trying to get her the first real good opportunity she could have and get my mom on that big deer. This deer did exactly what we wanted him to do. He was looking for a hot doe. He walked within 60 yards of the blind and anybody watching that's been there is like, shoot, shoot. We just had so much trouble getting ourselves arranged. He got behind the blind where we didn't have a window open very good. Lindsay couldn't get him in the scope. It was just one of those situations where you're best off to not shoot and just see what happens. We watched that buck feed off and Lindsay said, how did I do? And I said, you did great. Now let's get out of this blind and get in those cottonwoods and see if we can find one holding her grandmother's hand as she eased off some snowy edges. She's still all girl and having fun out there with her dad and her grandma. Within an hour, Lindsay and I had crawled off the top of this rim, bailed off into the bottom of the cottonwoods with the wind in our face, and we found ourselves a hundred yards from a great buck sound asleep in the cottonwoods. As his does fed around him, it's the longest 13 minutes of my life. Lindsay and I snuck another 40 yards, got behind a tree, and the film says the rest. <laughs> That's how we want to kill him. <laughs> People say it can't be done. Snuck in and walked on it. Well, I did. Well, okay. we crawled. We did crawl some. You think he'll work? <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. Kind of majestic. Maybe. I know, right? Around the wondering what I did today. This. This is what I did. I left Lindsay with that deer for a few and she filmed this on her own. I went to go get my mom to get her back to take pictures and show her what had happened. It's such a great moment in time. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of things that are happening going through your brain after the first time you've killed something. Uh, Lindsay's been around it her whole life. So she understands the life and death part, but it is a little real when you do it yourself. And so I'm glad she filmed this for her. Huh? Oh. Congrats on your first animal. Thank you. Not just big game animal, your very yeah. first animal. Thank How you. was the experience? It was good. It was long, but it was worth it. Lots of flying, sitting in the cold weather. Yes. 
we had two experiences this morning where we had a deer come into the blind and we just couldn't get things set and we were all over the place and that's what I call the emotional roller coaster that oh almost almost and it's like oh it didn't work out but but he was an eight and we got this one down <laughs> and he is a ten yeah he's a beautiful deer uh mature deer one done we just crawled into about all 60 yards or something that wind's gonna bugger our film bugger anyway Congrats. I'm proud of you. You did good. Thank you. Can we eat them? Yes. Thank God my mom was there. She said, you forgot the White Bone Creations handshake. Congratulations on this deer. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, I'm so proud of that girl. Take those pictures, y'all. You're only there one time. Take them. If you want her and hide and everything, or do you want just... No, I just want school. Okay. You want to keep your we got Lindsay's deer all quartered up and cleaned up. We worked back to the truck, made a hot lunch, and this is where I started to get real slim on film because we were working so hard to get mama deer. My mom and I crawled into that area where the big buck was. We saw two does and that was it. And one mule deer buck on our way out and we started to get that very panicky feeling like, oh, we're gonna run out of time. On our last morning of the hunt, as our heaters melted the snow off the top of the blind, my mother was burning a hole through those binos. By day three, we had realized that that big buck was probably traveling through the property and I just happened to catch him on a hot doe all of our efforts we never did see him again so mom was going to shoot the first buck she had an opportunity to and we were going to relax the rest of the day like an answer to prayer the buck from the day before that gave lindsay an opportunity showed up in about the same place although he took another route that was substantially farther my mom got set up this deer was about 340 yards and we were thinking he was closer to about 240. She leveled off and it went a little bit low right and that buck ran out of our lives. So we got on foot and started stomping our way through the cottonwoods on what wound up being a very cold, very stormy day. We worked our butts off y'all. We walked from one end of the cottonwoods to the next just seeing if we could find us a buck. We struggled, but we were in good spirits. I went back up and tore down the blind in the middle of the day, and we finished up with one long evening walk. We saw one little buck, and it started to get dark and cold, and we realized it's really not about killing a deer. It's about being here together, working really hard, and enjoying our time. A little bit of struggle, a whole bunch of learning, and a whole bunch of being together. This is going to happen more on 2019. Okay. I thought that was a deer looking at it there. What? I looked like there was a deer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's videoing. Yeah, it's videoing. Okay. So. So it's, so it's dark 30. Yeah, it's about the end. On the third day. Grandma missed her white tail, but we tried really hard, and we've been hiking around for a while, but we have no white tail for Grandma, but Lindsay and Ryan, yes, they got the fantastic them breeders. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bummer. We tried. It changed a little bit. Weather changed. We probably just pushed them around too much. It's, our toes are cold. It snowed a little bit. It's going to smell snow some more. Yeah, well, it was fun. It was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 To me, there is nothing sad about this. The whole thing was just precious. To look back now, ha. Huh. It's hard to put into words. If you would please remove your hat, 
I'd like to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for deer, this beautiful and abundant critter that pulls us out of our cozy environment and brings us together as a family. Lord, thank you for healthy, well-managed lands and the tools that give us fantastic photos and brilliant videos. Lord, I pray that through these films, others are encouraged to share their hunts and tell the right story of hunting. And lastly, Lord, I pray that we never forget our responsibility to tend to the land and the animals as you intended. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.